Let's take a look at blue. Our first blue card is Component Collector. For two and a blue, you get a 1-4 Humunculus creature token, creature card. I keep saying token, there's so many white human creature tokens. That last group. <coughs> um, if it's neither day nor night, it becomes day as Component Collector enters the battlefield. So this is your day-night cycle starter. Whenever day becomes night or night becomes day, you may tap or untap target non-land permanent. So you can use this to untap creatures you've attacked with, or use this to tap creatures that your opponent might block with, or attack with on their turn. That's very, very interesting. For three mana, that's pretty cool. Kind of like the um, Conjurer in the D&D set. It's a, a tap, untap creature card that gives you um, the ability to tap or untap one creature or non-land permanent um, whenever the day and night card flips over. The next card is Consider, which is another one we went over earlier in the week. It is one blue for an instant. Look at the top card of your library. You may put that card into your graveyard and then draw a card. So if you don't want the card that you see at the top of your library, um, you can put that in your graveyard and then draw a mystery card, or you can take leave that card um, on top of your library and draw that card instead. So it's kind of like a scry one and draw, but instead of putting it at the bottom of your library, you're putting it into your graveyard instead. Um, the next card is Curse of Surveillance. For four and a blue, you get an Aura Curse, Enchant Player. At the beginning of Enchanted Player's upkeep, any number of target players other than that player each draw cards equal to the number of curses attached to that player. So you can stack an opponent with a bunch of curses and everyone else that's playing against them will be allowed to draw cards as the other player goes starts their turn. That's pretty big. Um, the next card is Devious Cover-Up, for two, a blue, a blue. Uh, it's an instant. Counter target spell. If that spell is countered this way, exile it instead of putting it into its owner's graveyard. You may shuffle up to four target cards from your graveyard into your library. This is a very powerful, um, counter spell. Because you get to put four cards from your graveyard into your, back into your library and shuffle. The next blue card is Dissipate for one and two blue. You get an instant. Counter target spell. If that spell is countered this way, exile it instead of putting it into its graveyard. So it's another counter spell with exile. Very powerful. Um, instead of, because there's lots of graveyard play um, with Innistrad Midnight Hunt, this is very powerful because you're exiling cards instead of putting it into their graveyards, so they can't then recast them if there's a um, an ability on the card that allows you to play it from your graveyard. The next card is Drown Yard Amalgam. For four and a blue, you get a 3-6 zombie horror creature. Um, when Drown Yard Amalgam enters the battlefield, target player mills three cards. For two and a blue, down, Drown Yard Amalgam can't be blocked this turn. So it can get in and attack uh, by paying some more. It's a five cost creature with six defense, which is pretty good in terms of uh, getting what you pay for. And it has a ETB, enter the battlefield, target player mills three cards. So if you're playing blue mill mills deck, this is a, a pretty powerful milling card. There's not a lot of uh, mills cards, so or there's not a lot of powerful milling cards. This is one of the best ones. Uh, the next card is Fading Hope. For one blue, you get an instant. Return target creature to its owner's hand. If its mana value was three or less, scry one. So you get to bounce a card and possibly scry one if you're bouncing a cheaper card. 
The next card is Falcon Abomination. This is horrific looking. A uh, two and a blue, or a two-two zombie bird card with flying. When Falcon Abomination enters the battlefield, create a two-two black zombie creature token with decayed. So decayed creatures can't block. Um, and when decayed creatures attack at the end of combat, they die. The next card is Permanent Sage. A three and a blue. You get a two three human wizard creature. If it's neither day or nor night, it becomes day as Firmament Sage enters the battlefield. So another day night cycle trigger. Uh, whenever day becomes night or night becomes day, draw a card. So this is a really great card to just leave on the battlefield if you're playing blue. Um, the day night cycles are going to cycle a lot. So this is a very good card to have on the battlefield because then you get to draw a card every time the day night card flips over. Um, the next card is Flip the Switch. For two and a blue, you get an instant. Counter target spell unless its controller pays four. Create a 2 2 black zombie creature token with decay. So you get to counter a spell. Um, it, it might not be countered if your opponent pays for extra mana. Um, regardless of whether it's countered or not, you get to create a 2 2 black zombie creature with decay. And again, decayed means that the creature can't attack. And when it does attack, or sorry, decayed means that the creature can't block. And when you attack with a decayed creature, you have to sacrifice it after combat. So the next blue card is Geist Wave. For one and a blue, you get an instant return target non-land permanent to its owner's hand. If you controlled that permanent, draw a card. So this is pretty edge case, the draw card part. Unless you're returning, it doesn't say opponent's hand, so you can return your own card, non-land permanent, to your own hand, um, and to draw a card. So it's basically two two mana, one and a blue, and you get an opportunity to bounce something that you want an enter the battlefield trigger on, um, and you get to draw a card. That's pretty good. I think Geist Wave is going to be a pretty standard blue blue card in this format. The next card is Grafted Identity. For two and a blue, two and blue, blue, you get to play Face Off with Nicolas Cage and John Travolta. Fantastic movie. Um, it's an enchantment aura. As an additional cost to this, to cast this spell, sacrifice a creature. Enchant creature. You control enchanted creature. Enchanted creature gets plus one, plus one. So you can sacrifice one of your creatures, preferably a low level creature. Um, or one of your zombie tokens, maybe. And you basically take control of an opponent's creature card, and that creature gets a plus one, plus one buff. So it's pretty good. <clears throat> the next blue card is Larder Zombie. For one blue, you get a 1-3 zombie creature that has Defender, so it can't attack. Tap three untapped creatures you control. To look at the top card of your library, you may put that card into your graveyard. So Larder Zombie gives you the opportunity to tap three creatures and look at the top card of your library, which is pretty powerful if you're looking for a specific card. The next blue card is a commander card. Lear, Disciple of the Drowned. For three, a blue and a blue, you get a three, four human wizard legendary creature card. Spells can't be countered. That's everybody's spells. Your spells, my spells. Anybody playing the game of magic at this current time, spell, that spells can't be countered. Which is a very interesting thing to put in a blue card where you're countering a lot of spells. <clears throat> the rest of the card reads... Each instant and sorcery card in your graveyard has flashback. The flashback cost is equal to that card's mana cost. So flashback, again, is a mechanic where if you pay one mana for Larder Zombie, if it had flashback, you could cast that card again from your graveyard, but then you have to exile it. And so this um, 
human wizard, legendary creature, Leer, lets you cast flashback on any instant and sorcery in your graveyard. Which is crazy. That's a very powerful card. The next blue card, sorry, I'm, it's football season just started, and I'm very excited and watching all the highlights on my other monitor over here. The next blue card is Locked in the Cemetery. For one and a blue, you get an enchantment aura. Enchant creature. When Locked in the Cemetery enters the battlefield, if there are five or more cards in your graveyard, tap Enchanted Creature. Enchanted Creature doesn't untap during its controller's untap stem. So this is a, a ray of frost, a um, a porthole of sorts. You're basically you're tapping an enchanted creature, and it won't untap during its opponent's untap step. And you have to have five or more cards in your graveyard in order to do so, and it's very cheap with one and a blue being its mana cost. Very good card. Control your opponent's creatures. Um, not control, but affect your opponent's creatures. The next blue card is Memory Deluge. For two, a blue, a blue. For an, it's an instant. Look at the top X cards of your library, where X is the amount of mana spent to cast this spell. Put two of them into your hand and the rest onto the bottom of your library in any random order. The reason why it doesn't just say four cards is because this card has a flashback spell. So the first time you cast Memory Deluge, you pay four, and you get to look at the top four cards of your library, put two of them into your hand, and the rest onto the, ba onto the bottom of your library. The second time you cast this from the graveyard, you have to pay seven, so you can look at the top seven cards of your library and put two of them into your hand, and the rest on the bottom of your library. The next card is... Nebel Guest Intruder, which is the um, the Magic the Gathering Arena pet for this set, the little Gravekeeper guy. He's very cute. Um, if you pre-order Magic, or if you pre-order the set on Arena, or wait until the set comes out on Arena, you can get this guy as your little pet, and it's very cute. Two and a blue. He's a two-one spirit creature with flash and flying. When Nebelgast Intruder enters the battlefield, up to one target creature an opponent controls gets minus two, minus zero until end of turn. So that's cool. You can flash them in, so if someone's attacking with a powerful creature or you're about to lose a one-on-one, -on -one, um, flash him in and target creature an opponent controls gets minus two until end of turn. Um, very much like a lot of the rogues um, in blue. Zulaport Duelist, you can flash him in and he gives a minus two, minus zero till end of turn. Um, he's not, um, he doesn't have fla a flying though, so he, this guy's, the Nebelgast Intruder is a little bit more interesting. The next blue card is Ominous Roost, another card we went over last week. Two and a blue for an enchantment. When Ominous Roost enters the battlefield, or whenever you cast a spell from your graveyard, so these flashback spells, which if you have Leer, Disciple of the Drowned, you can cast anything from your graveyard, um, you create a 1-1 one, one blue bird creature token with flying, and this creature can only block other creatures with flying. So... In combination, the Ominous Roost and the Leer uh, Disciple of the Drowned is going to give you a billion gajillion ravens, 1-1 one, one bluebird creature tokens um, that can only block with other creatures with flying, and you can just kill your opponent through the air. The next card is Organ Hauler, 3 and a blue for a 3-2 zombie creature. When Organ Hoarder, oh sorry, Organ Hoarder, not Hauler. When Organ Hoarder enters the battlefield, look at the top three cards of your library, then put one of them into your hand and the rest into your graveyard. So another, um, another top of library card, very common in blue, very common in blue in this set. Um, it's going to be very interesting. The next blue card. 
is Otherworldly Gaze. For one blue, you get to look at the top three cards of your library, put any number of them into your graveyard, and the rest on top of your library in any order. So you get to rearrange the three cards on the top of your library, or you can put some of them into the graveyard, or you can put all of them into the graveyard. And then Otherworldly Gaze has a flashback cost of one and a blue, so you can do this twice for three mana total. The next card is Patrician Geist, two and a blue, for a 2-2 two -two Spirit Knight creature with flying. Other spirits you control get a 1-1. One -one. Spells you cast from the graveyard cost one less to cast. So this is pretty insane, actually. If you pair this with Seer, or sorry, Leer, from your graveyard for its original cost and that original cost becomes one less because you're casting it from your graveyard with patrician geist that's a pretty insane combo right there that's a very efficient um it's very spooky very fitting i'm very excited about this combo uh the next card is phantom carriage for four and two blue you get a four four spirit creature token token Budge. Um, spirit creature card with flying. When Phantom Carriage enters the battlefield, you may search your library for a card with flashback or disturb, put it into your graveyard, then shuffle. So Phantom Carriage puts a card direct, any card you want that has flashback or disturb. Um, you can take any card from your library with one of those abilities on it and put it directly into your graveyard where the, you can then cast it immediately so basically assuming you have the mana to do so you can pick any one of your uh, cards you may search your library for a card with flashback or disturb so two abilities that let you cast things from your graveyard put it into your graveyard in which you can immediately cast if you have the mana and you get a 4-4 flying creature out of it. The next card is Revenge of the Drowned. A three and a blue instant. Target creature's owner puts... Target creature's owner puts into the top... What? Target creature's owner puts in... Target creature's owner. Okay. Target creature's owner. So I pick... I target a creature. And then we're talking about the owner. Puts it on the top or the bottom of their library. You create a 2-2 black zombie creature token with Decayed. So basically you're sending a creature back to the library of your opponent and you get a black zombie creature out of it. That's, that was just tricky to get through. The next card, I don't know if that's me or the card. Um, I'm going to chalk it up to me. I'm having a weird foggy weekend. The next card is Secrets of the Key, or one blue. You can instant investigate. If this spell was cast from the graveyard, investigate twice instead. And when you investigate, you create a clue token. And a clue token lets you sacrifice it to draw a card. You pay two mana to sacrifice your clue token to draw a card. Um, and Secrets of the Keys has a very expensive flashback cost of three and a blue. Considering the original cost is only one. Um, oh, I guess it's an expensive flashback cost because you can investigate twice instead, so you get two uh, clue tokens. That's fair. The next card is Shipwreck Sifters. One and a blue. You get a one, two spirit creature token. Oh my god, I keep saying that. You get a one, two spirit creature card with. When Shipwreck Sifters enters the battlefield, draw a card, then discard a card. Whenever you discard a Spirit card or a card with Disturb, put a 1-1 counter on Shipwreck Sifters. So, the Sifters will get more powerful whenever you discard a creature um, that is a Spirit or a creature that has Disturb on it. 
Uh, the next card is Scab Wrangler. For one and a blue, you get a 2-1 human wizard with tap three untapped creatures you control to tap target creature. So assuming that you have a large battlefield, you can tap three of your creatures to tap one of your opponent's creatures, or I don't know why you would ever want to, but you could tap three of your creatures to tap another one of your creatures. It's not bad. Uh, the next card in blue is Sludge Monster. For three and two blue, you get a 5-5 five, five horror creature card. Whenever Sludge Monster enters the battlefield or attacks, put a slime counter on it on up to one other target creature. So most likely a target creature your opponent controls. Non-horror creatures with slime counters on them lose all abilities and have base power and toughness of 2-2. Two, two. So you can make your opponent's um, you can make your opponents really tough creatures, really small, by making them two twos, or you can take really weak cards you own, um, put slime counters on it, and then um, they become two twos. So if you have a one one or a zero one or a zero four, you can make it a two two, um, as long as you're willing to lose all of that card's abilities. Very, very interesting. I think there's going to be a lot of fun to be had with this Sludge Monster. The next blue card is a Mythic Spectral Adversary. For one and a blue, you get a 2-1 Spirit Creature with Flash and Flying. Whenever Spectral Adversary enters the battlefield, you may pay one and a blue any number of times. When you pay this cost one or more times, put that many 1-1 one -one counters on Spectral Adversary. Then, up to that many counters on target artifacts, creatures, and or enchantments. Wait. Then, up to that many other target artifacts, creatures, and or enchantments phase out. Okay, so you can... This is kind of like the other adversary from the white list. Maybe that's what they're going for. All adversaries have this en entry payments device. Um, so you can make Spectral Adversary very buff, and then if you put five counters on Spectral Adversary when it enters the battlefield, you can then, uh, phase out that many creatures, enchantments, or artifacts that your opponent controls, or you control even, um, and phasing out means that it's no longer on the battlefield, um, and then at the beginning of the next turn, um, they phase back in. Their next turn. The controller's next turn, I believe. Um, so I don't know if that's as powerful as the other adversary card in white. Um, I'm excited to see if they keep adversaries in all colors. Um, the next blue card is Startle. For one and a blue, it's an instant. Target creature gets minus two, minus zero until end of turn and you create a 2-2 black zombie creature token with Decayed, and you get to draw a card. So an opponent gets weaker, you get a 2-2 black zombie creature, and you get to draw a card. Pretty good instant for one and a blue. And then we've got Storm Rider Spirit. For four and a blue, you get a 3-3 spirit creature with flash and flying. So it's just a straight up five mana, 3-3, three, three, with flash and flying. Um, the next card is a card we went over last week, Triska Decophile. For one and a blue, you get a 1-3 human wizard. You have no maximum hand size, as long as Triska Decophile is on the battlefield. At the beginning of your upkeep, if you have exactly 13 cards in your hand, you win the game. And you can pay three and a blue to draw a card. So this is a very interesting, fun card. It's got one of those weird and um, intrusive, argumentative uh, win conditions right there on the card. Uh, and it also has the ability that you can pay as many times as you want to draw as many cards as you want. Uh, the next card is Unblinking Observer. For one and a blue, you get a 2-1 homunculus creature. You get to tap to add a blue. 
and spend this mana only to pay a disturbed cost or cast an instant or sorcery spell. So the observer lets you pay less mana, technically, because it gives you a free mana for tapping it. Um, it gives you a blue mana to cast a disturbed cost creature from your graveyard, or you can play, use it to cast an instant or sorcery. Most of the time, cards like this are in blue, and they tap to add mana that you can only use to cast instant or sorceries. But because Disturb is such a big part of this set, uh, they've added the Disturb, Disturb in there as well. So the last new card in blue is Vivisection. For three and a blue, the sorcery. As an additional cost to cast this spell, sacrifice a creature, and you get to draw three cards. So if you've got Triska Decophile on the board, Vivisection is a very good combo piece for it. It'll be a lot of fun. Uh, because you could just draw three cards, and you're looking to have exactly 13 cards in your hand at the beginning of your upkeep. And that's it. That's it for blue. Some really fun stuff in here. It's very spirit-heavy, um, very horror-heavy. I think blue is leans really hard into the undead stuff during sets like Innistrad, where it's a lot of horror elements. Um, generally, blue is very mystical and magical. This is more horrific and spiritual. Lots of spirits. A very, very interesting combo going on with the... Um, Monocolor Commander, uh, Patrician Geist, Organ Hoarder, that kind of thing. Ominous Roost. Some really interesting combo pieces in this set for blue. Um, 